right, so this video is all about purchasing. And we're gonna cover a couple of examples in here. We're gonna go through sending a purchase order. We're gonna go through receiving the invoice or bill and also adding a purchase for things that were unforeseen. We will touch on the accounting sync or integration as we go through, but there's another video that is much, much more in depth about this. Um, so we'll really just touch on that accounting integration a little bit as we go through. First point to make is just to distinguish the difference between the two types of orders because we've got separate videos for each of these types. So purchase orders is this video and for us, a purchase is anything outside of your business really. So that's gonna be things like suppliers and contractors, literally anyone that sends you an invoice. The, on the other hand, you've got work orders uh, where work orders are much more internal. So work orders will get used for time sheeting by many people. They'll get used for tracking internal costs, i.e. people who own um, maybe their own digger and the single biggest difference between these two is purchase orders go to accounting. So your Xero or your QuickBooks, for example, and work orders do not, they simply track within Build Exact. But yeah, this video is all about purchase orders. So example number one, we are going to start by going into Windows and grabbing that line. So most of the time you're gonna start this way by finding in the actual screen, the item or items that you want to order or put a cost against. And it's all started the same way. You tick them and go order. This will take you into what we kind of call the ordering process, i.e. an order can start its life as, as nothing. It can just be unsent. It can then go to be sent to someone. You can then receive the invoice or the bill for it. And if you need to, you can cancel it. You can jump into this process at any point, i.e. there's definitely examples where you will go straight in and just receive things. This example we're doing here for the windows, we're going to send a purchase order and then we're going to receive a cost against it. So I'm gonna go through and fill out this purchase order. Up the top, description, it wants to know what it's all about. This single line here is purely so you can find it more easily. The only exception is if you're doing cost plus jobs, we use this description on the customer facing invoice. So in that case, spelling is kind of more important. Moving on down, it'll have the contact and it should on occasions automatically fill out the attention, i.e. who it's going to. Supplier reference, don't worry about that. We're gonna fill this out for you as you go. Date required, this is you telling the supplier or, or putting it onto the purchase order, basically when you require it. Instructions, this can be absolutely anything. So for example, you know, delivery via John Street, um, or it might be, you know, please contact our supervisor on 04 blah, 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 uh, before delivery. It can be literally whatever you like. Moving on down. So it's pulled the line through, and it knows what the cost is, it knows what the item is. I can add extra notes against anything most commonly these notes are used for color selection or to feed people back their quote numbers. So in this case, I'm gonna do the second one. And you can add extra lines at this point if you send a purchase order and you go, oh yeah, right, I need to order an extra item from this. Maybe it's something like delivery I forgot to allow for. It could be anything. Um, you can always add extra things. And I'm not going to in this case, but I do want to make a quick mention to say that if you do add extra items, the absolute absolute single most important thing you can do with this is tell Build Exact which category this line goes into. Because you're creating a new item, it has no idea where that money goes, and you need to tell it where that money will basically end up um, so that it can budget it properly. If you don't, you'll know about it because it'll sit right down the bottom of your costing screen. Lastly, these two little boxes here. The first one, show costs when printing. This is just a choice that you can have where you can say, look, show this price or don't. Um, it's particularly good if it's a quote, you can show the price back to the person. Uh, on the other hand, you send a, a list of things to a supplier and you're just buying off a catalog. It's probably less of their business what you've allowed for it. This one, you should very rarely need to touch. Um, so this 
the order is GST free item will respond to what the contact is set to, i.e. the contact section has um, a register for GST option against each person. So if me, um, if I wasn't registered for GST, this should automatically turn on. Keep an eye for it um, because mainly in instance where it's on by accident, um, you'll need to go back and fix the contact to just say, yeah, actually this person does claim tax. But majority of the time, you really never need to touch that. Awesome. You can add delivery and freight expenses as an allowance if you need to, and that just adds to the budget of this order. And when you're happy with it, you can go either save and close and then send it later or print it and then send it, or you can do what I'm doing and save and send straight away. What it will do is it puts this uh, kind of preview screen up or confirmation screen up so it doesn't send it immediately. You've got to hit send. Uh, and this is just filling out the email uh, to, that goes to the supplier. You can absolutely add other attachments at this point. And all of these are coming from the uh, details section of each of the jobs. It will put a tick next to it to say, yep, ordered. And you'll notice the status here. And what's gonna happen is I will have sent this and the next logical step is they'll send me back an invoice, probably for a deposit in this case. And I can go back into the order here, or I can go up to purchase orders and go into it there, or under jobs, there's an all orders section and I can go into it that way as well. I'm gonna use this one. And what I'm really wanting to do is just push this status forward. So it's at sent and I can go, yep, next up is I've received something and it'll pop open with what I call the accounting screen because once you connect to your accounting, most of this screen is what your accounting system wants to know about and what we push across. But this is all about the bill. So you could say, yep, this is my bill number and this is when I got it. Again, your accounting system needs to know this. Uh, let's say into January. Notes, so in my example here, I'm gonna do a deposit. So I would probably say deposit. And if there's nothing too significant to note, then don't worry about that. With the amount, it wants to know what actually happens. So you can say like 0.1 for 10% and it'll calculate 10%. However, more than likely, you've just got a round figure from someone where they've gone one lot of $700 for deposit and that's fine, just type in whatever it actually says. If you ever need to do some rounding, you can do this and this just adjusts a couple of cents and makes life a little easier. And then from here, you can go part received or fully received. I'm gonna say part received because I know this is just part of a larger order or I'm gonna receive another bill against it. However, fully received is end of the road. If I scroll down, I'll see the invoice that's put in and I've got an option here to say, look, if everything's been received, you can make it received here as well. I, you can tell Build Exact that instead of it being part received, everything's fully done. So that's just if I click the wrong button when I put the, the receipt in. You can toggle between them really, really easily. I'll go save and close and start to show you the comparison we're doing here. So it started to track the actual cost, $700. I can click on anything blue, as mentioned in other videos. So $700, we've got $6,000-ish left to spend, and that equates to $10,000, uh, sorry, 10% of our budget that we've been through already. We're gonna do that comparison line by line, category by category, and ultimately overall, down the bottom here, which means 3% of the budget has been spent, and we also show this up the very, very top. And a little handy side note here, you can use this up arrow to get more details about the breakdown. And this is just to show, for example, the breakdown of purchase orders, work orders, and variations. Anything that's under other is something that you've manually keyed in. Uh, so to be aware of that, you really shouldn't ever really be doing that. This is a great way to know if it's been manually entered. Um, the short answer there is, for all the actual costs, it really should be a type of order that you're putting through. Lovely, so 
What I'm gonna do is one more, and that is to say, go back into the order and just add the second invoice. So I can go plus, and the remaining balance is about $6,000. Obviously, I'm taking this off my invoice. If you ever see duplicate here, it's just trying to flag that you've put this number in before. It might be another supplier's used it, or it might be that you've put the bill in um, before already. And you can click on this duplicate, it'll open up another screen and show you all the bills that have this number. So you can check for yourself whether you've done it before. Awesome. Uh, I've got the bill number, the date, the note, the amount, all good. We can say received and save and close. Note that each of those two bills will go to zero as separate items. And again, it's just given us that summary. It's split those into separate uh, expenses. And I used the same number, but typically your numbers would be different here. Awesome. We'll do uh, just another example very quickly and to really just to cement the, uh, the process here. So let's say I've got a permit. This is something I'm probably unlikely to send a purchase order for, and I just want to record the expense. Same exact process, I can go grab and order, which doesn't make a huge amount of sense because I'm not sending an order. But as mentioned already, it's that order process we want to be in. So I'm going to be going to received. I'll be saying who it's come from, and I'm just gonna add a new supplier. So we'll say cancel. And you can fill out as much as you want here. Obviously the more the merrier, um, but the bare minimum it's gonna to want to know is the contact group, i.e. what type of supplier it is. Uh, it'll want to know things like the email and the phone number and what your default accounting um, account is, i.e. which account within your chart of accounts um, this should be going to, the supplier. Again, there's another video that goes through this in way more detail, but I'll just leave it like that. So we'll say the cancel and it's the permit. And because I'm never creating an order in this case and sending it out, really none of this else uh, needs to be filled out. I can go what it is, who it is, and receive it straight away. And we've been through this screen a few times already. Again, I'm using the same number, just over and over. And I'll say it came in at 450, fully received. So in the instance where you don't actually send a purchase order, you can see it, it's a very quick little process. And the benefit is we're recording it here and ultimately sending it off to your accounting system. One final example, and this is what to do when you get unforeseen costs, i.e. they're not in this list. We also see people who will use this process um, if they just get a bill and it's not really clear what item it matches to and they really just wanna put the whole cost against one of the categories rather than trying to match it against any specific line. So I've gone into the purchase order section and said plus and the only real difference here is to what we've done so far is that there's no line. I, it doesn't know what I'm buying. But other than that, it's pretty much the same. So I'm gonna do nails here because I'm treating this like an unforeseen cost. And we'll just say it's come from, the, from this one in this case. Not too worried about the actual supplier. I just wanna show you the example but nails, because you always seem to run out of them. And if I was to go what it is and who it is and received, it would give me an error saying, come on, you've got to order at least one thing, i.e. this can't be nothing. So I've got to go in here and, and put in what I've bought. Uh, we see a spectrum of people, of, uh, of what people put in here. So from a lot of detail to almost nothing, um, and you can add as many lines or as few lines as you want here. I'm gonna say nails, 50 bucks, and I bought three boxes. And as mentioned already, the single most important thing here is telling it what category this goes into, because otherwise it has no idea, and you'll know it has no idea because it drops it right down to the very bottom of your costing screen when it puts it in. 
So add it in, received as always. And I'll fly through this one because we've done it several times already. Number, date. The figures, which should be fine because we put them in two seconds ago and received. And save and close. And we'll wrap this video up by just showing you what that actually looks like when it goes in. And it's this line here where it's gone in with a $0 estimate value because it's a new line, but it's still tracking against the whole category. So for the tracking purposes, it still works just fine. All right, let's move on. Thank you.